Ladies and gents, boys and girls, what is up? Friday, December the 23rd, 2022. Appreciate you all tuning in. Chris Phillips here, the Daily Crow of the Spurs Up show. What is going on? On an exciting morning, Lenora Sellers officially committing to the Gamecocks. As you see, we are officially in the Christmas spirit. Got the big man himself up top. Love it. Anyways, we're taking your questions, your comments, your calls, 843-790-3377. That is 843-790-3377 as I get situated here on this Friday. I see Taylor Formal, Jeff Gullage, Jamie Lane, Travi, Hunter Kelly, Hudson, Stephen Borwell Jr., B. Hughes, C. Youngblood, Stephanie Lee, Noah Johns, uh, Joey G., Chuck McIntosh, Cody Branch. What's going on? Also, those in the Big Cock Club Discord Head over to the TDC Questions channel, the TDC Questions channel. Be sure your questions are answered there. Of course, guys, as always, TDC brought to you by our friends over at Prize Picks. Go download the Prize Picks app. Go to prizepicks.com. When you do, <clears throat> use the promo code TSUS to receive a 100% deposit match up to $100. Guys, you can play anything and everything, college sports, pro sports. They have got it. Over at Price Picks. Again, that is Price Picks. Download the app. Go to pricepicks.com. Use that promo code TSUS to receive a 100% deposit match up to $100. Check them out and be sure to tell them that Chris from the Spurs Up Show sent you. Again, guys, appreciate you all tuning in. Uh, very, very excited to chat with each and every single one of you. Lenore Sellers. Is officially a Gamecock. Ho, ho, ho. Santa Claus came early and left Lenora Sellers under our tree. Uh, big time pickup, four star quarterback out of South Florence High School. And uh, the Gamecocks quarterback room, guys, I tweeted this just before I came on the air. But you look at the quarterback room, and these are the ratings of the players that you have signed now in your room, right? And this is the ratings they were, obviously, when they were signed to the high school. Five-star Spencer Rattler, four-star Tanner Bailey, four-star Braden Davis, three-star Colton Gothier, four-star Luke Doty, four-star Dante Reno, and now four-star Lenora Sellers. So your quarterback room has gone from just a couple of years ago, a weakness, to now I'd probably argue one of the best in all of college football. It's absolutely crazy what Shane Beamer and company have done. Kudos to them. And, uh, yeah. May the best man win the job, right? I know a lot of people, their first question is going to be, where does Lenoris Sellers fit in? You know, can he win the starting job? Will he win the starting job? Is it a given? He's going to be the next guy. I just say, may the best quarterback win, right? The thing you love is competition. Iron sharpens iron. And uh, whoever wins that job certainly will have earned it. So anyways, guys, really, really good stuff. Really great stuff. Shane Beamer and company stay absolutely red hot on the recruiting trail. And you absolutely love to see it again, guys. Appreciate you all tuning in. Thank you all so much for the continued love and support this week. Been a fantastic week. Been very, very busy on this side of things as we prepare for Christmas and getting through the Christmas rush. I've been getting messages from many of you that you have been receiving your Made by Jocelyn t-shirts, which is really great to hear. Um, those should all be delivered by Christmas. So by tomorrow, if you have not received yours yet, uh, you should be receiving those by end of day tomorrow. If you do not, please reach out to madebyjocelyn at gmail.com. Many of you have asked about the email. Where can you reach out to her? Madebyjocelyn at gmail.com. But anyways, guys, thank you all so much for, again, the continued love and support. Mason Jar said, so we need some Beamer Sellers 23 hats, Chris. Mason Jar, I feel like you're a little overexcited, my guy. Uh, is Spencer Rattler not coming back? I, I mean, just, just take a deep breath, my dude. Take a deep breath. All good. Let's see what Spencer Rattler's doing first. Let's see, let's, let's see what Spencer Rattler's doing first, my guy. Let's see what Spencer Rattler's doing first. Either way, you guys see we got the, you know, it's funny. I went shopping last night. And I was looking for a Santa Claus hat, and I couldn't find one. Just could not find a Santa Claus hat for whatever reason. So this was the next best thing. And I'm actually really happy with how this turned out because these little guys up here are awesome, are awesome. So 
Anyways, guys, big podcast drop today, of course, our Gamecock fans Christmas wish list, a.k.a. the Dear Santa episode, which is always a really, really fun one. Go check it out. Episode 745 officially of the Spurs Up Show. And, guys, of course, we are just one week away from kickoff. Just one week away into the Gamecocks. Take on Notre Dame. And, again, guys, how much momentum you have right now, it's crazy. You know, I, I obviously, like two weeks ago or so, we were all freaking out over the OC stuff. Um, people were saying that the Gamecocks had lost all momentum, right? Had lost all momentum from the end of the season. And beating Tennessee and Clem sucks. And sure enough, now we sit here. Gamecocks are, are right on the edge of a top 15 class. You've signed the most four stars in a class ever, I believe is what Brad Crawford said. I believe it's 13 four stars now, which is more than you've ever signed in a recruiting class. One of your best classes, I would say, over the last decade plus, no doubt. I'd probably say the best class you've had since 2007, just in my humble opinion, especially if you can land Nick Harbour in the spring. So I would say momentum is still at an all-time high in Columbia, uh, despite what some may have said a couple of weeks ago. So anyways, really, really good stuff, guys. Exciting times, great time to be a Gamecock, and really, really looking forward to uh, looking forward to next week getting into the South Carolina Notre Dame matchup. Also, it is Christmas Eve Eve. Merry Christmas Eve Eve to you all. And uh, yeah, just again, really, really pumped to spend some time with the family, obviously, enjoy some Christmas festivities. And glad we get to do this here on this Friday before we disperse for the weekend. I'm sure many of you are with family right now. I'm sure many of you are off for. The Christmas holiday, so if you are and you're enjoying this, thank you so much for spending your Christmas Eve Eve with us. Anyways, guys, that being said, phone lines are open. We're taking your questions, comments, calls, 843-790-3377. That's 843-790-3377. Somebody texts in <clears throat> about uh, Ryan Brewer's work in regards to his iron work. Yeah, he does a great job. Yeah, I knew that Ryan Brewer made those. He does a great job for sure. Shane Beamers, I think, got one in his office, actually. So the, the welcome home iron work piece. So um, again, guys, I would say on the merchandise side of the business, thank y'all so much for the love we felt, man. It's been absolutely incredible. Let's go ahead and jump to the phone lines. Um, Young Savage. Young Savage, what's going on? How are you? I'm doing good, man. How about you? Because um, you guys are super excited for Christmas Day and your birthday. And we all wait to, to have a have budget with Jesus. And to be clear, I am just super happy that you're guys I'm talking to you uh, once again. And it's been, it's been a minute since we beat, uh, get, beat Crystal last month. Yeah, man, I'm doing great. No, it's uh, a lot of exciting things have happened since that Clemson win. And uh, yeah, no, I appreciate you asking, man. Looking forward to spending some time with the uh, the family and, and friends and, you know, just enjoying Christmas, man. I'd probably say it's my – this is one of my favorite times of year for sure. One of my favorite times of year, uh, Christmas, and then going into New Year as well and excited for the game next week. And, yeah, a lot of exciting things happen. Yeah, the game that is next week, I'm super excited for this moment. So, so we got to beat, like, North Dam to beat them down to make it them uncomfortable. And um, I have a feeling we're going to beat North Dam this week and – I hope, after Christmas, and I hope we can win, win again still, so we can we can deserve our win as a belay Christmas gift. And uh, we get a shout, give a shout to Coach um, Bama. Hey, he's doing a great job out there and support one or other to be on the grind or all the time, all this football season, and giving thanks to all the buses and the love and the caring and the sharing, all that. I I feel. Very happy for them. I'm very happy for them. And to be clear, I'm just good at it. Very well said, Young Savage. <clears throat> I appreciate you, my friend. Hey, Merry Christmas to you and yours, for sure. Merry Christmas to you and happy birthday. Thank you, you my friend. You can. Thank you. You as you well. I, I appreciate you, man. We'll talk soon. All right. Love you. Yeah, man. Take care. Much love to Young Savage. Much love. Um, anyways, guys, keep the calls rolling, 843-790-3377. And again, you, you really got to take a step, take a moment, take a step back and just appreciate what Shane Beamer and company are doing. I mean, it's, it's not long ago that, you know, he just got in here and we finished like 79th in recruiting the Gamecocks now. And I don't know if this is even reflective of the seller's commitment 
I don't think it is <clears throat> because it's just showing 22 commitments in the 20. Yeah, this is this is definitely not um, showing it. Uh, Gamecock 16th in the country in recruiting with Lenore without Lenora Sellers. So uh, at least I believe that's I could be wrong. Let's see because it's showing 13 four stars. I don't see him on the list, though. No, he's not on the list. No, so it, it does not include him. It does not include him. So, um, yeah, really, really great stuff. I mean, you, you, again, you got to really appreciate what Shane Beamer and company are doing and the momentum they've built. And, um, you know, I I, 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 I I tell you guys this. Again, I've said this many times, but <clears throat> the success Shane Beamer, the success Shane Beamer's having on the recruiting trail is not surprising to me at all. You know, this is a guy who who was at the University of South kind of the first go around when, when the Gamecocks went to the SEC championship. I mean, he saw and helped recruit some of the greatest players in school history. So he knows what it looks like. And I, I think what you're seeing is the success they're having on the recruiting trail is exactly why you wanted Shane Beamer to be your head football coach. Because we all know, right? And I think we can all be honest with ourselves and we can admit that South Carolina is a unique job. It's, it's not an easy job, right? And you need someone here that truly believes in it. Because the only way you can sell something, right? They'll tell you this in sales, right? If you really want to be an elite salesperson, you have to believe in your product. You, you, you just have to. You have to. There are few people, there are few and far in between, that can <clears throat> fake it to a level to where they can fool the end consumer. Very, very few people can do that. So you need to believe in your product. And Shane Beamer's a guy... He believes in the University of South Carolina, and I've said this many times, but the best quality or one of the best I believe that Shane has, he doesn't just believe in what South Carolina is. More importantly, he believes in what South Carolina can be and what it will be under his leadership. So, um, <clears throat> you know, I, I, I think that the success they're having on the recruiting trail is not something to be surprised about. I think it's just a mixture of when you have someone like Beamer who who works his tail off and believes in what he's doing and believes in the program he's affiliated with and believes in, again, what it can be versus what it's always been, that's infectious. And, you know, prospects feel that. They also believe that. Their families believe that. And in turn, you have a recruiting class like we're seeing currently. So, uh, job well done by Shane Beamer and company. And again, I think it's just the beginning, guys. I think this is just the tip of the iceberg. And, you know, I think if the Gamecocks can continue to win seven, eight, nine games a year in this first couple of years of the Beamer era, I think you're going to continue to see the recruiting classes <clears throat> get better and better and better over his tenure. So um, really exciting stuff. Really exciting stuff. I dig music. Chris, are you still giving five lucky subscribers a $100 gift card? Uh, I dig music. I'll give you a, a bundle of joy, my guy. That's what you get from me. So, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Uh, <laughs> uh, Mason Jar, I'm a little excited. How can we not be? I, I hear you, Mason Jar. I'm just, I, I just, my, my guy wants the, wants the Beamer Sellers 23 merch. I'm like, can we, can we, can we, can he win the starting job first, my guy? Can we, can we win this? Can he win the starting job first? <clears throat> Connor Lee, are you going to have TDC while in Jacks? Yes, yes. So that Thursday, right? We're hitting the road Wednesday. Thursday, I'll probably go live just from the, the Airbnb, something like that. Nothing crazy, nothing crazy. But we will have TDC. The only day we will not have TDC next week is Wednesday because we'll be on the road. And then uh, Friday, obviously, because it'll be game day. Let's jump back to the phone lines here. Awesome. Uh, Dolphin. Dalton, what's up, man? How are you? How's it going, man? Nothing much. Get the day off work, you know, just hanging out, playing Call of Duty. It's cold as shit outside, so probably not going to go outside that much. Bro, I didn't, I didn't know you ran it on COD like that, my guy. I didn't know you were a Call of Duty guy. Yeah, I, I okay. do. What, yeah. what console are you on? Um, on my day off. I play it on PC. Oh, okay. Okay, you're one of those guys. All right. All right. Yeah, <laughs> but, but I wanted to uh, call to ask sort of a basketball question. I know 
you know, there's a lot of momentum around uh, the football program, and obviously I'm very excited about that. But, um, you know, I wanted to uh, – because I watched a game last night against Western Kentucky, and I saw how well we shot and how, and how we played. And I'm just wondering if you think that that game against Western Kentucky – is sort of a spark to get our season somewhat back on track and sort of salvage it maybe a little bit in SEC play. You know, I'm not saying we're going to make it into the postseason, but if we do have a strong finish and GG gets drafted and everything goes right, that could add a little bit of momentum to the basketball program as well. I mean, yeah, I hope so. I mean, obviously we all hope so, man. I think what you saw from Michi Johnson last night was encouraging and – um you, you just you, you need that, you know. I mean, we we I feel confident Gigi's going to do his thing for the most part, but it is a it, it's a lot to to ask a seventeen year old freshman to to carry the load. So you you need somebody else, you know. And I, I think Michi, the Ohio State transfer, I think he needs to be that dude for you, man. He needs to be a twenty point per game type of guy. And so, um, you know, we've been, we've been talking all year. It's just when you lack the depth that I feel like this team lacks. I mean, the guys that your starters, your go-to guys, they have to play well. They just, they just have to. There's really not anybody else, you know, it's going to come in relief of you that's, that's going to pick up the slack. So, yeah, a guy like Michi Johnson's got to play big. I mean, but you know, and, and maybe to your point, maybe that that win last night can. I mean, you got Eastern Michigan, what, like a week from today or something like that. So, um, you know, that should yeah, be, and that should be an easy win, and you go in SEC play. play. Yeah, so um, you know, that last chance a week from today to sharpen up before you get into the. To the, to the to the to the real part of your schedule if you will so uh, I mean we, that that's what we're hoping right we're hoping it serves as a spark I'm still not going into SEC play with any you know any crazy expectations obviously but you know I, I mean would love to see them get it rolling to some capacity and just have a decent enough season to like you mentioned recruit get GG to the league and and use that in recruiting and because that's what the first two, three years, I think, for, for Lamont's going to be, is just building the roster. I mean, it's just – he's got to build a roster and build, well, the build question, some real Well, the depth. question is, like, what what kind of season at this point – I mean, obviously, we've lost a lot of games. We've had a lot of letdown games. We've looked really, really bad just all the way around in, in a lot of those losses. Um, what kind of record do you think what you would consider a, a quote-unquote success? Because – I know success for this team I don't think was ever going to be making it to the NCAA tournament. It's more about putting Lamont in the best possible position to get the program on an upward trajectory. What do you, what do you think going into SEC play we're going to have to do to sort of make that happen and put us in a better position next year than we were this year? Well, I think maximize GG for sure. I mean, you want to feature him. I mean, I, I think this entire year really is about GG Jackson and getting him to the next level. Um, in, in regards to, I mean, you, you need to win a couple games. I mean, that's that's goes without saying. I mean, if you can, I mean, dude, I, I think in this, I know this sounds like a low bar, but if you could go six and twelve in SEC play, I, I mean, the closer to five hundred, the better, obviously. But I think you have to be realistic. You know, I, I know a couple of days ago we were talking about this team might only win two or three SEC games at most. Um, so if you can if you can win six or seven SEC games, I mean, I, I think that would be a major accomplishment. Just just don't. I mean, you were picked to finish last. You know what I mean? If you don't finish last, you overachieved, which sounds crazy, but um, that's just where you were picked. So you know, if you can finish ninth or tenth in the league, um, how, how many how many teams? What is it? Twelve of the fourteen go to the SEC tournament, right? Is that correct? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. So, I mean, we make, went to the, make the SEC year. tournament. Make yep. the SEC tournament, right? Make the SEC tournament. Don't be one of those two left out. You can do that. I mean, I, I think that I'm not going to – you know, it's it's weird to call that a success. But with all things considered in year one, I think that would be, you know – and and, and we, we all want to see a team that I think gets better over the course of the year. Um, but, you know, I, I – like I said, the way I view this team is again, you you lack depth. You have to be realistic. However, I think there are going to be some nights in SEC play where a guy like Michi goes off and Gigi plays well, and maybe Hayden goes off or uh, Chico Carter Jr. Whatever you know, Jacoby Wright. I could see you pulling an upset or two. I, I could definitely see it happening. But uh, you know, I just I, I think over the long haul, obviously in SEC play, I think we kind of know what to expect. But I mean, the closer you can get to five hundred, the better. Make the SEC tournament. I think from there you'll 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 
you know, it'll be a passing grade for Lamont Paris in year one. Yeah, I mean, the the thing that sort of I I don't understand is I know there was a lot of uh, there was a <laughs> lot of like I don't know what you want to say a lot of hoopla or, or um, you know bittersweet reaction to Frank being fired, mm. but I I don't know I mean how people could say we should have retained Frank um, and extended him and let him go another year, um, even with the team that we have, because we all knew that with all the guys we had transfer out, we had basically our entire starting lineup transfer out that, uh, you know, it it was going to be a process and and this was going to be a rebuild. Yeah, no, absolutely. I I think that, uh, you know, there's always going to be those people that second guess and some people that, you know, just felt like we shouldn't have pulled the plug on, on Frank Martin. And I saw a guy comment this morning, just talking about that, you know, we pulled the plug. I'm like, Frank Martin pulled the plug on himself, man. I mean, it's, it's, you had a decade. I mean, what more do you want? At some point, the school can't be handcuffed. There's got to be some expectations. I I mean, I, I get it. This year's rough, but you know what? The end result of this season is going to be the exact same end result as the previous three seasons under Frank Martin. We're not going to make the postseason. I mean, it's it's so. What difference does it make? Like, what what difference does it make? So, no, nah, we all listen. We all knew this was going to be a rebuild in year one, and it might be even a rough year in year two. But you you've got to be patient. You just you got to give them Lamont pair. You got to at least give them a shot. You know what I mean? If if year four, year five, we're still in this type of position, then okay, we can start to have that conversation and reevaluate. But I think I think everybody who's realistic you know, expected this and, and, and came into it with, with patience and um, they're going to give Lamont a chance to build. So I think you got to have that attitude. Well, um, thank you for taking my call. I so. appreciate it. Dalton, you're the man. I appreciate it, dude. Great stuff from our guy, Dalton. Uh, great call. Yeah. I mean, again, big win for the Gamecocks men's basketball team last night, uh, beating Western Kentucky. And, you know, it wasn't totally shocking for me. I I thought this team, you know, I felt like, I felt like there was a chance they could bounce back. I I obviously was not going to pick it, but, uh, you know, a great job, great job by all parties and, um, you know, great job to be resilient and to bounce back for sure. It was awesome stuff. Uh, Anyways, guys, we'll keep it rolling. 843-790-3377. Appreciate you all. Merry Christmas and early Merry Christmas to you all. Really excited to to get home and and spend time with the family and, and hang out with everyone. And um, I'm also looking forward, man, to next week. Right? I'm looking forward to next week and and uh, you know starting to break down the Notre Dame game. Of course, guys. Quick content update: We will have no podcast on Monday. There will be no podcast on Monday um, un- unless. Unless something happens over the weekend, which I say I don't think it will, but knowing Gamecocks athletics, you just simply never know. Um, You know, I I don't think, yeah, we will not have a podcast on Monday. TDC will rock as normal Monday, Tuesday. Wednesday, we'll drop a pod. No TDC. Wednesday, the podcast will be the full game preview, breakdown, prediction, all that good stuff. Uh, we might do a Twitter spaces as well, but no TDC because we will be on the road to Jacksonville and I'm looking forward to it. Uh, let's jump to the phone lines. Awesome. What's going on, man? Shout out to Florence, South Carolina, home of the newest Gamecocks quarterback. What's up? Hey, how are you, man? I'm doing well. What's up? Great. Just, Real quick, just curious. I mean, I know we got Nick Carver that we're still looking at uh, trying to add. Who else do we have um, out there that we're looking to add, I guess, come February? Just curious for the recruiting class. Looking to add in February? I I mean, Nick Carver is really the only one that I'm, I'm really familiar with. Um, I mean, outside. I think Nick Carver is kind of the last big fish out there for the 2023 class. I could be wrong. Um, the other commitments I think we don't know about at this point, the welcome homes are 24 guys. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know who else we might add in 23. I think probably the rest of the 23 guys or, or you know, immediate guys will add will be transfer portal. But uh, in regards to recruits, yeah, I think the big one on the radar that's left is Nick Harbor. I, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Maybe, maybe Hyatt, the Hyatt kid. 
uh, what, Devin Hyatt, Jalen's brother. But uh, now the, the most notable, obviously, is Nick Harbour. I'm, I'm really not familiar with uh, – if there are other 23 guys we realistically have a shot with to, to, to sign at this point. I don't know. I don't know. So, yeah. All right. Well, hey, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. you, man. No, thanks so much for the call. Yeah, I, I apologize if I'm not brushed up quite well enough on that. But as far as the 23 guys, yeah, I don't, I don't know who – I don't know who's left. I mean, I mean, Nick Harbour's the big one. You know what I mean? Nick Harbour's obviously the big one. And uh, I would expect us to add, again, more guys – in the portal, but uh, now, nah, yeah, guys, again, of course, the big news, Lenoris Sellers committing to the Gamecocks this morning. Really exciting stuff. Let's jump back to the phone lines here. Awesome. To accept, press one. What's going on? How are you? What's up, dude? What's up? Um, just calling to, uh, first off, the sellers get was, was pretty good to be able to flip up on Syracuse, man. That's pretty good. Uh, his highlight clips were pretty awesome. Uh, but wanted to talk about the bowl game and how disappointing it is, man, that so many people are opting out. And I don't understand it because it's like, other than Cam Smith, correct me if I'm wrong, mm-hmm. I don't know if any of them have first round grades. So I don't understand why I've got like Dylan Wan. I'm just opting out. I'm not hating or anything, but it's like, bro, like you know, you can improve your draft stock. I'm pretty sure, pretty sure you're not even, you know, projected to be a top four round draft pick. Why are you opting out? I just don't understand. There's just such little importance that feels like now for the players in the bowl game, where it used to be, that's kind of what the whole season was building towards was taking a trip with your team and, you know, getting that trophy. And it's like. I mean, we're missing probably 70% of the starters yeah. going into that game now. You know what I mean? And it just kind of – it takes away from it some. And I hate that that's the case. But just three or four years ago, that wasn't the case. And yeah. it's just, like, so prominent now, you know? Yeah. And I just – I don't get it. Yeah, no, I mean, listen, you know? it's, it's, it's a very fair um, – it's a very fair concern to have. And, I, and I'll say this. I, I think at this point I'm immune to it and I'm used to it because I sort of have to be. And because it's just such the norm, right? But to your point, I'll say this. A guy, I, I already mentioned a guy like Darius Rush and the vantage point for him and why he's doing it. And he's not a he's not a first-round grade, but you talk to people in his camp and what he was – he was advised to not play in the bowl game, and he wanted to. And he was advised not to, right? And right. I, get, I get it. He's worked his entire career to get to this point where he's probably going to be a fourth or fifth rounder, maybe a third rounder. Heck, I don't know. But he's going to get drafted, and he's got to stay healthy. I, so I, I, I get that. I would agree with you, though, that it just feels like there are a lot of guys that are, you know, there's a fair number at least, more than we would prefer, that don't play, that it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And so I, I look at it this way. On one hand, like we, we, we accept it again because we have to. And, and you're just – it's 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 almost a waste of effort and energy, and you're going to have the extremely unpopular opinion if you're coming down on everyone that opts out, right? But to be fair, right. and again, to your point, it is ass backwards when you think about it. Like, you know, I understand everything's about greed. Everybody's greedy now. It's all about money. That's all that matters to people. That's it. But there used to be a time, and I'm not trying to sound like an old head because I'm not necessarily, but there used to be a time where a bowl game was viewed as a reward. Like, you get to play in a bowl game. You don't have to. You get to, right? Right. And so that's, you know, the, you you a bowl game is a reward for all the great things you did over the course of the season. Even if you're not in the national championship, even if you're not in a playoff, right? You won eight games. You are rewarded yeah. – yeah. By going to the Gator Bowl. It wasn't looked at as an obligation. You get to do it. You don't have to do it. Right? So, and at the University of South Carolina, I've said it many times. This will be, I think, our 24th or 25th bowl game. If we win yeah. this one, it'll, it'll be, it'll be, or something like yeah, that. it'll be double digit bowl wins. Yeah. Right? So, going to and winning a bowl game at the University of South Carolina is still very, very important. It's still a very big deal, right? Like, some of people's yeah. favorite memories are from bowl victories. 
Think of 2012 against Michigan. Think of the, or what was that, 2013, whatever. Think of the Michigan game, the Clowney hit. Think of Connor Shaw and yeah. Jadavion Clowney's last game against Wisconsin. Think about the Outback Bowls in 2000, 2001. Think about the first all-time bowl victory in 95 against West Virginia in the CarQuest Bowl. So, you know, on one hand, I get the business side because money does make the world go round, right? You got to have it. I get it. But it's a shame because it's 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 weird. It's it's you work the entire season to play in a bowl game, like you really do. I mean, it's your reward, and you don't want to play. I mean, you're yeah. a football player. That's what you do. On the flip side, I get it when a guy like Darius Rush is told, "Hey, if you're even nicked up, banged up, it's it's going to hurt draft stock. It's going to do this." So is the NFL to blame? Are the scouts to blame? Is the I, I don't know, but it's it is a shame, and it doesn't it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Like it would never. It what's funny? Like it would never happen in baseball. <laughs> like right. I can't imagine a guy, a pitcher, being like, "Well, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not throwing in the super. I'm not throwing in the regional." Like Will Sanders being like, "I'm not going first round." Yeah, I, I might, know. I might blow my arm out. I'm not going to throw. Well, bro, yeah. you you might yeah. you might twist your ankle walking down the street you know what I mean? you you I, and i yeah. understand football is a lot different than baseball right football is a car crash every single play and your odds of getting hurt are far greater in football than they are any other sport but it, it is you know i i see both sides i see the business side but i also i understand the fan disappointment side that you know the, the bowl game's still great because guess what guess what i don't cheer for dylan wanham I don't cheer for Cam Smith. I don't cheer for right. Zach Pickens. I cheer for the Block C. I cheer for the Gamecocks. These are the people that make up the team. But whoever trots out there, the 22 that go out there, all we got is all we need. I don't mean that as a slight at those guys I just mentioned, but that's the reality. Carolina football existed long before these guys were on the roster. It'll exist long after. And that and that's just the reality. It is what it is. But I understand why it's disappointing. I, I, I do get that. And, and really, if you look at it, Technically, this is like the, the Capital One Bowl was the best bowl we'd ever been to. This is ahead of the Outback Bowl. So, technically, this is like our second best bowl game we've ever been to. You know what I'm saying? Like, money-wise or whatever you want to call it. Um, second or third, wherever you want to place it. So, it's a very important bowl game for us. And it's just, as a college football fan, it feels like we're doing something wrong now. There, there's got to be some kind of regulation, maybe not on the bowl game, but the transfer portal, we got almost 2,000 kids in there right now. A lot of those guys might not find places to go. I mean, it's it's, it's just a lot. They, they need to do something with the regulation of this stuff because it feels like the beautiful thing about college football was you always felt like it meant more, you know, because it was like they were playing for the school and there was pride on the line and state pride. And it's like it just feels like that's just, that's just going away. and It's just another step to the pros, you know. It's just And, and it just – and it hurts coming and, and – and as far as the players are, it's cool because we get to look at some of the guys for next year. You know, it's like a, a preview of these guys that are going to play that, that hadn't maybe played a lot this year that might play next year. But it's just like, man, the team that marched out against Clemson is not the team that's marching out against Notre Dame. That's just a fact. You know, and, mm. and, it's, just, and it's sad because if you think just back to the 18 outback ball, or it was 17 or 18. I think it was an 18. Yeah. But that was, you know, that was a good ball game. That was a great ball game. We beat Michigan and, and the whole team played other than Debo. You know, Debo sat out, but you understood. You know, it was like, okay, like, but, you know, just, it just, it just sucks, you know, a little bit. Just that it just feels like it's not as important as it once was to the players. Yeah. And it never was as important to the players as it was to us. And I get that. I'm not naive, but you just wanted to, to make it, make it feel like it is. But, <clears throat> Right. That's it. Bro. I'll hop off. And one more quick thing. Hmm. Anything else on Marshawn Lloyd? Any other news? Possibility he's coming back, or is that? No, nah, I think that's dead. You heard nah, I, I think that's dead. Yeah, I mean, I, dead. Beamer spoke on it. What was his presser yesterday? Two days ago, whenever it was. Uh, Beamer uh -huh. Beamer spoke on. He was asked about Lloyd and said they haven't talked in two weeks. So, no, nah, I think that's, okay. I think that's, that's I think true. that was just there were some rumors, but that, that's that's dead. Yeah, that's dead. Okay. All right, buddy. I'll hop off, man, later. Yeah, Will, you're the man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. And I would say this on the bowl game things, and, you know, I, I guess I would say I would preface this with if you take this personally, then that's your problem. But when it comes to guys playing in bowl games and not playing in bowl games, some guys love the game. 
Some guys love what the game can do for them. And that's all I'll say. So, I, you know, some guys love the game. Some guys love what the game can do for them. And I respect it. I, I respect it. Get your bag. Get your paper. I get it. Mama need new shoes. I get it. I get it. But, and I mean, again, do you, bl- like, who's truly to blame? Is it the NFL? Like, do you blame the NFL? Like, let's hold them accountable, too. Because if if NFL scouts are telling a guy like Darius Rush, hey, if you get even banged up a little bit, it's going to kill your draft stock. That's not fair. That He can't play in it. Why can't he play in his bowl game? Why can he not play in his bowl game? That is so is the NFL to blame. I you know I I don't know. I don't know. I I, I like I see both sides. Like I said, man, I, I see the business side, but I, I see the fan side. I, I see why it's disappointing. And to me, like <laughs> you ask any former athlete, you ask any guy who's played football at Carolina. You know what they'll tell you? You know what they'll tell you guys? I think even the ones that played in the NFL, they'll tell you, I'd do anything to have one more game. One more game with my teammates. And to give that up just feels weird. Like, it's, again, you ask any former athlete, whether it don't matter the level either, the high school level, the college level, the pro level, at some point, you play your last game. At some point, you put on the jersey for the last time. And there's so many guys who would give anything to do that again. There's so many guys that they they reminisce. They try to do everything they can to relive the glory days, right? The amount of guys I played college baseball with and high school baseball with that are still playing slow pitch softball to this day, trying to relive the glory days and recapture some of the magic from the days of the diamond when we were younger. Like, it's crazy. And to think guys are just giving that up, just – they have an opportunity to play in a bowl game, go out one more time with their teammates, and they're just giving it away. It's 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 crazy. It, it feels crazy. It feels crazy. But the almighty bag speaks, and that's just the reality of where we are. But I, I don't know, man. It, it's when you look at it from that side of things, it's 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 hard for me to to comprehend. It really is. Like a guy like Dylan Wanham, and I'm not trying to single him out, but like you got guys that are these veteran dudes. This is this would be his last college game. He don't want to play. Like you don't want to play. I, I just, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, you know, I can. Hey, everybody's different. Everybody's different. As long as you can lay your head on your pillow at night and it doesn't bother you, then. Hey, whatever's your decision, ain't mine. Start the phone lines. Call from. <clears throat> to accept, press one. What's going on? How are you? Doing good. How about you? I'm doing well. What's up? So, you know, I was thinking, you know, we're talking about letting these guys, you know, strap up and go out and play one more time. Is there a possibility in the future that we see college bowl games take a NFL Pro Bowl look where they take out the contact or do something to make it safer, potentially to let them play more and to make these seniors and NFL guys come out and play. So basically, like it wouldn't be a football game anymore. <laughs> I get what you're saying, but basically, it wouldn't be football anymore. I mean, yeah, exactly. it would be two hand touch. It'd be backyard two hand touch. Yeah, yeah. I mean. <sighs> That would be that'd be wild to say the least. That would be wild. Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I think if they want guys to play, they I, I think they've got to start paying them. I mean, I think the bowl games have got to come out of pocket, make it enticing, make it make it a lucrative thing. So that's what speaks. That's what speaks to these guys. So yeah, I mean, we've seen that money talks. Yeah, money talks. You you are right. So heck, I don't I don't know, man. I mean, it's you know, hey, bowl games are still giving players like gift bags and. You know they they go they go to the the they go to the location the bowl games at and they you know they go they go out and go to whatever right they take them out they take them shopping they go to a theme park they explore the town like it's a it's a fun thing bowl games are fun bowl games are fun but I don't know what was your take on picking up Lenore Sellers today oh I think it's a great pickup I think that uh, 
you know, four-star quarterback, you want to keep him home. You know what I mean? And, and everybody I've talked to is speaks extremely highly on him. Obviously, his stats speak for themselves. But, I mean, nah, man, I think, uh, you know, you add another great player to the quarterback room, and I, I love it for the competition side, right? May the best man win the job. But, uh, you know, again, everybody I talk to is extremely high on sellers. And, you know, it's just one of those things, too, that you, uh, you know, you never want to let a guy like that leave the state, you know. So, I, I think it's a great pickup. And, you know, just excited to see how he fits in. And, you know, I think we obviously all still hope that Spencer Rattler comes back next season. But uh, the quarterback battle for 2024, if Rattler comes back next year, the quarterback battle for 2024 is going to be a lot of fun. So, a lot of good players. And, again, iron sharpens iron. And I'm glad we kept – I'm definitely glad we kept Sellers home, for sure. You got to keep a guy like that home. Yeah, I agree. When do you think uh, Rattler will announce what he's going to do? I would imagine it'll come pretty soon after the bowl game. I, I'd, I'd, I'd have to – like, I'd have to imagine that's going to come within a couple of days <clears throat> after the bowl game, right after the turn of the year. I, I mean, you know. So, I I don't think it's going to be one of those things that really lingers into, you know, late January or anything like that. But, you know, it, it, all lives will be on that decision after that bowl game against Notre Dame for sure. So. Yeah, I agree. All right, man. We'll have a good Christmas. Hey, Merry Christmas to you and yours, my friend. I appreciate it. See ya. Hey, thank you so much. Great stuff. Great stuff. Great call. Um, yeah, no, really, really excited for uh, for Lenora Sellers. Panic Ritter is in the chat. What I want for Christmas is a girlfriend. God bless you, Panic Ritter. God bless you. God bless you. Phil, I will send you, by the way, that Dear Santa template. Google. Google. Clint, great point. He may say it in the interview after the bowl game. Again, guys, I, I, I'll just echo. And Tyler Noel says, hey, now, I play slow pitch softball every weekend. I love playing ball in my school. But slow pitch is a different world. Tyler, I'm, I'm just making the example, my friend. I'm just I'm – not, I'm, not, I'm not hating on anybody that plays slow pitch softball. I'm quite the opposite. I'm, I'm, I'm not at all. I'm just, I'm just making the point that there are a lot of guys who, who do that and chase the dream. They, they do. I, I know that for a fact. I know guys that I played with that, um, you know, they just can't – they can't let it go, man. They can't let it go. And, like, again, I'm not, I'm not judging. I'm just saying, though, my point being is that there are plenty of guys that would do anything to go back and to put the jersey on more time, right? And, meanwhile, we got guys who it's their last college game. It's their last opportunity to go out and play with their teammates, and they're just giving it away. And that, to me, is crazy. It's crazy when you think about it. It's, 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 it's wild. It's a shame. It's a shame that putting on the uniform doesn't mean more than that. And, but on the flip side, I get it from the business side. I get it from the business side. I do. I understand. I understand. But, I mean, again, who's to blame? The NFL? I, I don't – let me just put it to you this way, too, and, and this will be the, the unpopular thing to say out loud. I don't think fans accept opt-outs because they, they like it or they've come around. I think they accept opt-outs because they have to. I don't think college football fans like opt-outs. I don't. They're just forced to accept it because nobody wants to be the guy coming down on a college kid for making a decision. But in reality – there's no college fan that likes opt-outs. B- bottom line, nobody likes to see their favorite player sitting out, whether it's for business or for not. Nobody likes to see it. Nobody likes to see it, and college fans are forced to accept it. That's the reality. That's the reality, and it's just one we have to live with. And, hey, again, like I said, that's why I think moving forward and why I think, you know, as a fan, my best piece of advice would be this. Hey, we're, we're all excited about recruits that come in. We're excited about guys on our roster. But at the end of the day, you pull for the block seat. You pull for the garnet and black. And we'll support the 22 that go out there. All we got is all we need. And I'm happy and I'm excited to watch the guys who have stayed, who have not opted out, who will be playing in the bowl game. That being said, guys, let's go ahead and jump to a uh, quick break. On the other side, I want to continue to hear from you. More your questions, comments, calls, and more. You're tuned in to the Daily Crow.
All right, guys, we're back. Taking your questions, comments, calls, 843-790-3377. That's 843-790-3377. Yes, Luke, RJ, I saw your comment. I'm glad you like the uh, the Santa headwear. Like I said, I went last night, was trying to find a Santa Claus hat, and just couldn't. Just couldn't. I don't know what uh, – I don't know. Just the hats were too small for my my dome. So, this was the next best. I actually like this as an option. This is dope. I like this. I like this. I, I feel very – and it doesn't block the logo, right? Perfect. Just lines up perfectly. This is great. This is great. This is awesome. Anyways, guys, phone line's wide open. Um, my good friend Eric tuned in. <clears throat> he says that we have sold 40,000 tickets to a stadium that holds only 67,000. So there will be a lot of Garnet and Black in the stadium. Ruin Nation says, how's JC? As far as I know, JC's good. Have not talked to him this morning. Um, I think he's doing better. But, yeah, I'll, I'll let you guys know and keep you updated. Um, I'll keep you updated with how what's going on. But, uh, yeah. Anyways, the, uh, <laughs> the, the Santa – the Santa headwear is a big hit today. Ho, 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 ho. Merry Christmas, you filthy animals. Um, by the way, again, check out the podcast. that dropped this morning, episode 745. My Gamecock fans' Christmas wish list. And, of course, guys, I think this will be a yearly tradition. Every single year uh, on my Christmas wish list. Peace and goodwill to all in Gamecock Nation. And, yes, that even includes the I'm up, Phil. Oh, throw it. Hey, that's next level trolling when you're donating to throw shade. He says, John Edward Kruger, Johnny Edward Kruger, the biggest dork watching TDC. Come on, Phil. <laughs> Phil wanted to make sure everybody saw the comment. But anyways, guys, wish, wish, you know, take this time of year. It is a time of year of giving, right? So give some joy, right? Even to those that maybe don't deserve it or don't don't want it. You know, let's all take a moment to, you know, spread peace on earth and goodwill amongst all, all the Gamecock Nation. Again, even including the Carolina slap dick community, right? Make sure, make sure. I, they, I, you know, I know they probably all have gotten look coal in their stocking. They probably deserve coal in their stocking, but. It's fine. We'll we'll spread some spread some joy. We got a lot to be joyous about these days, don't we? Got a lot to be joyous about. So, anyways, guys, eight four three seven nine zero three three seven seven here on this Christmas Eve Eve. John Edwards says, "Find some joy, Phil." Come on, Phil. Uh, let's see. Antonio says, I don't like to opt out to bowls either for certain players like DJ Wanham. He's not a first to fifth round pick. Been in school, what, four to five years? Why not I say play six, seventh, maybe undrafted free agent? If you first, second round, then yeah. Yeah, very good. Um, yeah, I mean, again, like I said, like I said, you know, fan, I, I just, college football fans will never, and it's not just a South Carolina thing. I think this goes to every school. College football fans will never get used to opt outs or you know it, it'll never become a thing where it's like oh that's great i love seeing my a guy pull for and a guy you know i love watching play i love i love seeing him not play in the bowl game so yeah it's funny i'm actually eric on that note of uh the the tickets and everything i'm actually still looking for for two tickets so i was probably gonna wait to the day of the bowl game uh, some of the pri i mean I, i'll be honest with you guys some of the prices i've seen for, for bowl game tickets are just just stupid so we'll uh <laughs> probably be Probably, probably uh, hold off for a little bit, and we'll get our tickets secured next week. And, and looking forward to uh, looking forward to the game. All right, let's jump back to the phone lines. Awesome. Tommy. To accept, press one. Tommy, what's up, man? How are you? Uh, good. I just had a question. Um, how, so, how many QBs do we have, including Rattler, that are in the QB room as we speak? Yeah, so right now we have Spencer Rattler, Tanner Bailey, Braden Davis, Colton Gothier, Luke Doty, Dante Reno, and now Lenora Sellers. That is seven. And that's without including, like, I don't know if Jaden Daniels still on the roster, the the walk-on. So, But we, we got a lot. <laughs> we got a lot. Well, yeah, and um, so just say, uh, just brainstorming a little bit, yeah. 
if if Rattler decides to leave mm-hmm. um, after the bowl game, I mean, do you think Lenore Sellers, of course, isn't coming up to be a uh, – he's not coming in to be a backup, correct? I mean, I would assume his, his goal is to start. I mean, I, yeah, I don't think he's coming to just sit the bench his entire career. No, I think his goal is to start. Yeah. All right. Well, that's all I had, Chris. Yep. Uh, thank you very much. No, I appreciate have, it. Have man. a good Christmas. Hey, Merry Christmas to you and yours, yeah, my buddy. friend. I appreciate the call. Now, I would say Lenore Sellers is coming into play. Um, if Spencer Rattler does leave, you know, I I, I, I think I'll tell you this. I, I can't sit here and project and say, this guy's going to be the starter. This one's the leader in the clubhouse. I think it'll be a great quarterback competition between, realistically, I, I don't think Colton Gothier will factor in. I think between Bailey, Davis, Doty, and Sellers, because uh, we don't really know if Reno is going to be on campus yet or not, or kind of what his plan is. But um, between those guys, I, hey, may the best man win the job. I think it'll be a great competition. Let's jump back to the phone. Jack. Jack, what's up, man? How are you? Good, man. Um, so I went to uh, high school with Lenores, actually, and I was able to see him and – um, Luke Doty play, hmm. and I don't know if you looked at the stats, but how do you think they match up against each other? Because in my personal opinion, I think they're the two best quarterbacks we have in the world currently. I mean, I I, I think that um, you know, I, obviously Luke Doty has has got some college experience now, so we look at some of that film as well, and we look at how he's played for Carolina at this level. Um, no, I mean, I think Sellers has got a great chance to come in. And, again, I actually got a text right before the show, people saying they think he could be one of the best ever to play at the position. And, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm someone – I like to see it play out. Like, right, like like high school ain't college. You know, college ain't high school. Like, I, you know, that's – high school stats don't – they don't really mean a whole lot to me, to be honest with you. Like, I, I, of course his stats are good. You don't go to Carolina if you have bad stats. Um, but he went 15-0, and 0, right, as a, as a starter. And the guy's a winner. And – um you know, again, I, I think Sellers is a guy that will certainly factor into the quarterback room and the, and the, and the quarterback role. And, um, you know, how do they compare? I mean, I, I think that uh, maybe Sellers projects a little bit better than a Luke Doty, and I'm sure there's many fans that would agree with that. There, you know, it's, it's interesting with the Doty conversation. There's some that believe that he can still be a big-time guy, and there's some that have just completely – have completely sold their Luke Doty stock. So, um, again, man, I, I just say this. You added a quality player to your quarterback room, obviously, and four-star quarterback Lenora Sellers. You know, iron sharpens iron. May the best man win. Either way, we should be in a good position. We, we do not have a lack of options, that's for sure. Yeah, it makes sense. Well, y'all have a Merry Christmas. Hey, Merry Christmas to you and yours, my friend. I appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah, great stuff. Great stuff. Great stuff. <clears throat> uh, anyways, 843-790-3377. Again, a really good call. I know we're all excited for Lenore Sellers to be to be a Gamecock. Um, interesting tweet. <clears throat> excuse me. Interesting tweet here from uh, from from DeCarrion Joyner. He quote tweets, and, and, you know, maybe I'm looking too far into it, but Lenore Sellers tweets, stay in home, his commitment graphic, whatever. DeCarrion Joyner quote tweets it. And I'm going to post this in the TDC Questions channel so those can see what I'm talking about. He says, Welcome, little bruh. I pray this experience is everything you dream of. You a quarterback with the 100 emoji three times. Don't let anyone tell you different. So, hmm. That, that, uh, yeah. <laughs> KFC in Africa. Yeah, I, dude, listen, I, I – uh, yeah, I had a guy text me and say he could be one of the greats. We'll see. I mean, I, I you know, it's – it's to make that type of proclamation early on, this early on is, you know, I like to see it play out. But, again, I, I think – I think Lenora Sellers will, uh, you know, be a great addition, be a great addition to our room. And, you know, again, we, we've, we've got – We've got no excuse, right? We've got plenty of options. We've got plenty of quality options for sure. So, um, anyways, guys, phone lines are wide open. More than welcome to call in. Again, I'm glad you guys Boing. are enjoying. Oh, I think I messed up. My, okay, here we go. There we go. You guys are enjoying the, the Santa headwear. I might just wear this like all weekend. I don't, I don't know if I'll ever take this off, honestly. I might never take this off. 
anyways, um, yeah, yeah. I, I think Dak certainly with a not a not so subtle, you know, which it's not surprising in the slightest. Um, not surprising in the slightest. Um. Anyways, guys, just want to give you a an update on content. <clears throat> no podcast on Monday, of course, coming off of Christmas. We will have TDC as normal Monday, Tuesday. No TDC on Wednesday, but podcast will drop uh, because, of course, we'll be on the road to Jacksonville. Might do like a Twitter spaces for 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour, something like that on the road, but, but uh, no TDC that day. Thursday, we'll rock TDC from Jacksonville, and we'll be out and about in Jacksonville Wednesday and Thursday, hanging out, enjoying the scenes. And then uh, Friday, of course, game day. So no no TDC, no podcast on Friday because we'll have the game. Tyler Noll says, Dak firing shots at past coaches, it seems. I mean, he's been on Beamer staff for two years. They could have made him a quarterback. They could have made him a quarterback if they wanted to. So, I don't, I don't know. It's two staffs that hadn't thought he was a quarterback. Luke Argy says, put Dak in 2023. I hear you, my guy. Why not? Dak's got to come back first. It'll be interesting to see what he does. It'll be interesting to see what DeCarry on Joiner does. It really will. It really will. Because, again, I, I think that uh, – I think that – he still could be a valuable asset for us. I mean, again, I stick by what I said before that I don't think he's a, you know, necessarily like an all American wide receiver or an all American quarterback, but he's got a skill set. He's an athlete. He's an athlete. And, you know, you can always use uh, athletes in a number of ways. And every time he touches the football, it seems like good things happen. So um, I'd be more than happy to see Dak join her back in 2023. Let's jump back to the phone lines here. Call from Hunter. What's up, man? How are you? I'm good, man. What's you? I'm doing fantastic. Preach to ask him what's going on. Um, yeah, so I got a couple questions. Um, yeah. what, so what you thinking about uh, DK? Because I kind of feel bad for him, too. Like, I mean, with all the quarterbacks coming in, um, I mean, yeah, like you said, I would have been surprised if he, you know, try to go on a wide receiver uh, or switch to wide receiver. But, um, I, I mean, if I were him, I would try to go to portal and, you know, choose a lower school. Maybe that fits for him. But what do you think? Hunter, I wouldn't say that too loud, my guy. They'll try to cancel you off the internet. Um, no, I mean, listen, I, I – uh, yeah, I mean, I, I I, don't feel bad for Dak because he's, he's, he's a wide receiver. I mean, that, Dak's not a quarterback, yeah. my man. He's, he's not a quarterback on the roster. Right. <laughs> I mean, I mean – you know, I, 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 what, what, I mean, if, if I think that ship's kind of sailed, man, I hate to say it, but like if the carry on joiner was going to transfer and pursue the whole quarterback thing, he would have done that probably two years ago. So I, I just, and you know what? I'm, I'm glad he stayed. Yeah, I think, I think uh, I'm glad that, you know, he, he stayed a Gamecock and he stayed the course. And I think his loyalty is admirable. Um, but, you know, I mean, Dak Joyner is either coming back next year to be, you know, an athlete for us yet again, or his career is going to be done. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Especially he has the kids all the way and everything. I don't right. blame him if he goes, but, yeah. Um, and one more thing. Uh, so, I know it's not about South Carolina, but who are you picking to win with Tennessee and Clemson again? I'll probably go with Tennessee. Yeah. Tennessee, yeah. yeah. Joe Milton season. All right. Yeah, that's all I needed, man. I appreciate it. Hey, Hunter, I appreciate the call, man. Good stuff. Yeah. yeah take care. Great stuff there. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Slap Dick McIntosh. Chris didn't count Dak as a quarterback. Uh, yeah, no shit. <laughs> like, yeah, Hunter trying to get canceled off the internet for saying Dak should have transferred. My God, Luke RJ about to come down his throat. Luke, if you want uh, you want Hunter's number, you want to give him a call and cuss him out, you're more than welcome to. Uh, anyways. Anyways, 843 Happy, happy. Says props to Dak for being the player, teammate, and man that he is. Indeed. Yeah, absolutely, man. Again, I think if we're going to highlight when guys hit the transfer portal and 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 whatever, they dip out, they do whatever, then I think you should highlight a guy like Dak Joyner who stuck it out. And, you know, he loves the Gamecocks. He loves being a Gamecock. And, you know, I think that's admirable. I, I really do. I really do. So. 
Uh, Jay, Dak is talking about people in the comments on social media. A lot of people are trying to turn him into a wide receiver already. People don't know ish at quarterbacks. Jay, who is doing that? Who who is who is doing that? I haven't seen anybody comment and say Lenora Sellers should be a receiver. Nobody has who? I mean, maybe some of I, I just I haven't seen it. I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm not looking at the comments, which is a normal thing for me. <clears throat> Anyways. Big news today. Lenora Sellers making it official signing with the Gamecocks. Big time news. I tell you, if you can get Nick Harbor, man, I mean, this is this is one of I mean, this is one of the best classes you ever signed, I, I would say. One of the best. So. Tyler Old Dak for RB1. Hey, why not? Hey, I, people asking who's going to carry the football in the bowl game. Why not Dak Joyner? <laughs> why not? I mean, seriously, though, why not? He's an athlete. He runs well with the ball in his hand. Why not? I mean... I'm all for it. I mean, what you know, let's get creative. Let's get crazy. Uh, let's see. I don't listen, John Ebra. I don't know that Dak threw shade on Twitter, but he just said, Welcome. Pray this experience, everything you dream of. You're a quarterback. Don't let anyone tell you different. So I think obviously. Not so subtly to carry on Joyner saying, hey, don't let a coach tell you that you're not a quarterback. That's, I mean, that's it. I mean, I, you know, but I mean, I, I think going off his experience, I mean, listen, to carry on Joyner wanted to play quarterback. There's no, there's no question about that. There's no question about that. He wanted to play QB. I, I mean, I, I'd have to pull it up, but I think it was after the, I think it was after the, uh, the spring game in 2019, he literally said, if I wanted to play defensive back or play a different position, I would have went to Alabama. I would have went to Clemson. Like, he came to South Carolina because he thought he was going to play QB. That's why he came to Carolina. So, you know, I don't know if Muschamp and company sold him on a dream that wasn't realistic. I, I don't I don't know, which is a shame if that's the case. It's a shame. But, you know, just kind of is what it is, I guess. I don't know. What are you going to do? So, Rebecca, who who is asking you to call in? Who? 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 <laughs> who is doing that? Anyways, guys, 843-790-3377. Uh, big show today. Big show today dropped. Episode 745, the Dear Santa episode. The Gamecock fans Christmas wish list. Really, really fun stuff. So, really fun stuff. Um, yeah. Again, what I what I will always what I will always put on my Gamecock fans Christmas wish list is peace on earth and goodwill amongst Gamecock fans. I will always wish for that because there are a lot of great Gamecocks, but. The Carolina Slapdick community needs something in their stocking, folks. I mean something. Besides a lump of coal. Now, with their attitudes, they probably deserve it. They probably deserve a lump of coal. But you know what? Santa Claus, spare them and put some joy in their stocking. Put some joy in their stocking this Christmas. Hopefully, when they wake up on Christmas morn and look under the tree, they find some joy. Find some joy on Christmas, you grumpy asshole. Find some joy. Clark, it's the gift that keeps on giving all year long. Uh, let's see. Jay, he just announced, how could you see comments on social media if you're on air? Jay, Lenora Sellers announced at 1130, my guy. And also, I mean, I'm, I'm able to multitask. Believe it or not. <laughs> I can literally be on air and be scrolling on Twitter. I've, I've done it before. Yeah, that's how I'm able to, like, keep up with news and shit while it happens. Yeah. Anyways. Jesse Jacobs, Xavier Thomas tweeted out, South Carolina just got a star and it has since been deleted. Yeah, 
I'm sure that I'm sure the Clemson folks didn't like that. Jeff Gullard, are we short-handed at cornerback? I don't know if we're short-handed. We're going to be playing a lot of youngsters, though. Uh, you know, Anthony Rose will play. You might see some Keenan Nelson Jr. You might see you're going to see O'Donnell Fortune. Of course, Marcellus Dial will be featured, but you know, no Cam Smith, no Darius Rush, no Devonnie Reed, no R.J. Roderick. So. I can walk and chew gum at the same time, believe it or not. I am I am I am special to say the least. Yeah, for sure. Elizabeth Ballard says Clemson folks now hate sellers because he's coming to Carolina. Oh well, hey. And and the sky is blue. What what who who gives a shit? Jump to the phone line. From Dorian Butler. Dorian, what's up, man? How are you? I'm good, man. How about yourself now? I'm doing fantastic, man. Appreciate you asking. What's going on? Nothing much. Shout out Gamecock Nation or whatnot. Mm-hmm. Looks like we have a good, solid recruiting class coming in this year, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think we're sitting right now 16th on 24-7, and that's – I don't know that that's even including the Lenora Sellers commitment. So, no, nah, it's – it's yeah, I mean, Chain Beamer and company doing work, man. And, again, you had Sellers this morning, and Nick Harbor's the big one still out there, but – I mean, I, I think this is a fantastic class, man. I think it's one of the best classes you've had in the last decade. Yeah, to be honest with you. Yeah. So, um, well, really one of the questions I got was, okay, as far as the new OC coming in and whatnot, what are some things that you're really expecting to go through and see Carolina really take it to the next level? Because I know offense was kind of yeah. hit or miss or whatnot, but especially we got it together at the last little bit, and some people thought that was going to go through and save that job. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, what are you looking to see from the next offense coordinator? Yeah. I mean, Dorian, I, I'll tell you this. I, I don't think it's going to be like a complete reinvention of the offense mm-hmm. in the sense of like it's not like we're going from the triple option to the spread, right? Like I, I think that Shane Beamer and company, mm-hmm. I think they want to do a lot of what you saw in the last two games. But I think it's it's going to be a, a sort of less is more approach. I mean, you know, Dowell Loggins, if you listen back to that initial presser, they, they both – he and Beamer both made it clear – you know, they want to have a system and a scheme that's that's easy for their players to learn and comprehend and grasp and it's simple and not simple in the way that, like, the defense can grasp it and they know what you're doing, but simple in a way where your players can play fast, they can execute on it, and you can maximize their talents and their ability. So, you know, I think it's going to be spread. I think it's going to be up-tempo. I think they're going to be multiple. I think Shane Beamer likes the, the pro-style offense. Now, again, when people hear that word yeah. pro-style, they – they cringe a little bit, but I think they just want to be multiple. You know, Shane Beamer said they want to run the ball. They want to pass the ball. They want to be able to do a little bit of everything. So, you know, I think it's going to be – and what you hope to see again is, you know, those last two games of the season, again, they just – they scaled back. They decreased the verbiage, and they let their players go play. And that's what it's about, man, letting your best players go make ball plays, and you recruit guys to let them go play free and let them go play fast. And, you know, you recruit them because you believe in their abilities and you want their abilities to shine. So, I think with Dabble Loggins – you know, you know, the answer is we'll kind of see what changes and adjustments he makes. But, you know, I think what you saw in those last two games, I think they're going to want to do more of that. I, I don't think it's like, again, we're going from, you know, the triple option to the spread. But, um, you know, so yeah. I, I think they just want to run a system and a scheme that is fast, up-tempo, and uh, allows your best players to to play to the best of their ability. I, th- I think that's what you're you're mainly going to see from Dowell Loggins. Okay, that's good to hear. Um, what about the um, Arkansas transfer, Trey Knox, coming in? What do you think about him? Yeah, I think he's a big-time player. I'm excited for him. Uh, you know, he he was a guy that we were talking about the South kind of Arkansas game earlier in the season that we were, you know, we were highlighting. You know, we were focusing on. And he, he was a, a guy that, you know, Justin Stepp recruited. So that's a really unique relationship there. But Justin <laughs> Stepp recruited him. And, and uh, you know, he started out at wide receiver and transitioned to tight end. So, you know, he's a big-time athlete. So, you know, everybody worried oh, yeah. about the Jaheim Bell loss. I, I think that uh, Trey Knox will fill in beautifully, and I think he'll be a big part of our offense. And assuming Spencer Rattler's back, I think he'll be one of his favorite targets. So, dude, I think I think Trey Knox will be primed for a very, very big year in 2023. Word. I believe that, too. Um, what about the transfer from Newberry that's coming in? Yeah, Mario Anderson. I, yeah, the, the running back. Um, yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I think obviously the biggest question for him will just be the transition from D2 to the SEC. And so I'm, I'm yeah. going into it with, with realistic expectations. But, you know, another quality mm-hmm. body to add to that room. And, and, and we'll see, you know, how he plays and how he competes with guys like Dontavious Braswell and, of course, Juju and, 
But, uh, you know, Lavoisier yeah. Carroll and others. But, um, no, nah, it was great to see you, man. I mean, I'm a little biased, obviously, because I went to Newberry. But, uh, you know, an All-American yeah. an all American at the D2 level. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll just – we'll see how he can factor in. So, you went to Newberry when they were the Indians or the Wolves? So, so funny story. I got to Newberry the – at the, like the year of when they got their mascot taken away, like the Indians was no longer. Oh, so, my, so my first year, we were the Newberry Ends. We didn't have a mascot, and then my sophomore years when we picked up the Wolves. So, yeah. Gotcha, man. Yeah. Well, shoot, just wanted to go through and just give a ring, man. Shout out Gangcock Nation, and y'all guys have a good rest of your day, man. Hey, Dorian, I appreciate you. Merry Christmas to you and yours, my friend. Thanks so much for calling in. All right, yeah, man. Take care. Great stuff. Great call. Great questions. Um, yeah. I'm excited for Mario Anderson Jr. Go, go Wolves. Go Wolves. Anyways, guys, um, let's go ahead and jump into another break. On the other side, I want to continue to hear from you more, your questions, comments, calls, and more. You're tuned in to the Daily Crow.
All right, guys, we're back. Taking your questions, comments, calls, 843-790-3377. That is 843-790-3377 here on this Friday, TGIF, Christmas Eve Eve. Rebecca says, Chris, yesterday was the one year of my favorite great aunt from South Carolina passing away, the one that helped us beat Tennessee and Clemson. I went to the grave last night. God bless your dead relatives for helping us get those W's, Rebecca. We couldn't have done it without them. <clears throat> couldn't have done it without them. Todd Smith, what's up, man? What's going on? Appreciate you tuning in, guys. Merry Christmas to you and yours. Hope you've had a fantastic week. I know many of you have probably been enjoying uh, Christmas festivities, being off from work. I was able to go last night and look at some Christmas lights and get into the get into the spirit myself. So, really, really good time. Really good time. And again, guys, thank you all so much for the continued, the love and the support. Um, truly do appreciate it. You guys are the best, man. You guys are the best. It's it's incredible. So it's incredible the, the love we felt this this Christmas season. And uh, looking forward to next week, man. Truly looking forward to next week, getting down to Jacksonville. It's going to be a blast. It's going to be a blast. I, I love, I mean, you guys know I, I love hitting the road. And and I love the studio. But getting out of the studio and, and, and interacting with you guys, it's just so much fun. So looking forward to it. Let's jump back to the phone lines here. Call from Brian. Brian, what's up, man? How are you? <clears throat> What's up, man? Merry Christmas to you, Bubba. Merry Christmas to you. What's going on? Man, I think um, Santa done gave us a great gift. What a recruiting class so far, man. I mean, I'm just ecstatic at um, especially getting sellers. That quarterback room is going to be a little crowded, but, I mean, I see the, um, the Rattler comes back next year. I see uh, the rest of them fighting it out for number two. Yeah. No, dude, I mean, the the, uh, the class has been incredible. Uh, you know, like I said earlier, you got to tip your cap to Beamer and company for a job well done. Um, oh, yeah. You know, it's 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 not necessarily shocking to me, but I guess this quickly, this early on, to have this much momentum and put together this good of a class is uh, – it's impressive. It's impressive for sure. And, you know, you add sellers today. And, you know, like you mentioned, you, you can never have too many good quarterbacks. And I, I know we all obviously right. hope that Spencer Rattler will be back next year. But uh, you would think the quarterback room and the quarterback position – is in a, is in good hands for years to come, no doubt. I mean, you, you got plenty of options, right? So, um, oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, even the, even the tight end room's looking good, man. Because I mean, I, I Bell to me was our most productive tight end, but he was a hybrid. But now you actually got Chris. What I say about this class is the guys that commit want to be there. They, I, I mean, the transfer portal. I guess it's okay to a point, but I mean, it's like Beamer go play the best players. And he'll come up – I mean, he's a good enough coach. He'll tell you if he thinks he'll do better somewhere else. He, I think that's a transfer portal for because not everybody's going to see that and play. Mm. Yeah. That's just the nature – that's just the, nature, the best 11 going to play on offense, the best 11 going to play on defense. And I mean, you got to have good reserves, but then you got like third and fourth stringers. They can probably go somewhere else and be second three stringers, even starters. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, listen. But, the, um, the, the portal, are... Yeah, the portal's the portal's a big tool. I think Beamer's still going to utilize it. But you, but you are right. You know, it's 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 special to get these guys in the high school ranks and uh, you know grow them within your program. It's 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 a cool thing. So yeah, I mean, I'm glad Sellers is a Gamecock man. I'm excited. Oh, well, yeah, I've been reading up on the running back. We got Braswell. They yeah. said from what I've been reading, they said he needs to put on a little weight, but he's electric. He's a home run threat every time he touches the ball. Yeah, Dante. So, I mean, that, that's good to hear. But... Yeah, I just wanted to touch in with that man. And um, what about the basketball team last night? I mean, that team, Western Kentucky, them boys were huge. I ain't seen a tall team like that in a while. They were yeah. huge. Yeah, well, they had one guy that was like seven foot five, I think. So, yeah, it's uh, oh yeah, that yeah, was a good that was a good win. I mean, especially a game when you were the underdog to uh, to bounce back that way was much needed, much needed for sure. So I know, uh, I know, I was you, are you having are you having Hayden Brown T-shirts made up? <laughs> He's tough. Hayden Brown's tough, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I I don't know about the Hayden Brown merch, but uh, no, nah, it's it's exciting to see what Lamont's doing, and you know, just hope they can build on it. And, yeah, you know, about a week and a half from now, two weeks, we'll be in the SEC play, and it'll get it'll get really real then. So, all right, man. Um, you you have a good one. Enjoy your trip to Jacksonville, and go Gamecocks. Hey, I appreciate it, Brian. You're the man. Thank you so much. Bye, right, man.
All right, buddy. Bye. Yeah, take care. Great stuff. Great stuff there. Guys, let's keep it rolling. Phone line's wide open, 843-790-3377. Boy, it is cold outside. It is cold outside, for sure. <laughs> Chase Floyd, you're the man. You're funny. Chase is a funny dude. Old Slayer of Queens. Old Slayer of Queens. Again, guys, appreciate you all. Hope you have a fantastic Christmas. Hopefully, you've gotten your Christmas shopping done at this point. And uh, TJ Carter says, Sellers really committed to us. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. I mean, TJ, would you go to Syracuse over South Carolina? My game? Preston, I pray that Doty doesn't start over Bailey, Davis, or Sellers. Preston, I, I just pray that the best possible player starts, man. I really don't have a bias. I really don't. I really don't. Let's jump to the phone lines here. Call from. Hey. What's going on, man? How are you? What's up, man? I'm doing fine. How you feeling, man? I'm doing well. Appreciate you asking. What's up? Man, I'm feeling great, but I just I just wanted to uh, talk about the noise real quick. Yeah. I'm just thinking about how big uh, the NIL deals he's going to get because of the goggles, man. He probably get some goggles. <laughs> Sponsorships, he's gonna go crazy with his NIL. Fear the specs. I, yeah, I love it. Yeah, I mean, I, I would imagine NIL will, will will play very well for him with that. So yeah, then all the little kids will probably be wearing goggles to the. Uh, you know what I'm saying? They'll probably be wearing the, the specs to the game, and it's gonna be crazy. Man. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's gonna be cool, man. I mean, it's it's a uh, NIL is a great opportunity for all these guys, and and uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So. Yes, sir. All right, man. I'll be looking forward to the uh, the cop commander with the goggles, man. T-shirt. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I already right. know you got something planned. Well, I'm going to be quiet. I already we're, know. We're, we're scheming. We're scheming over here. We're scheming. I, I already know it, man. You have a good day, dog. Yeah, man. Hey, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for the call. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. Take care. Checking in from Memphis, Tennessee, by the way. Shout out to Memphis. I've never been to Memphis. Never been to Memphis. I've heard mixed res- mixed reviews on Memphis. So, anyways, guys, Brian says it's great to be a Gamecock. It is. It really is, man. It really is. <clears throat> it really, really is. Let's see. Rebecca says it's 11 outside here in Tennessee. 11 degrees. Preston says Sellers would be an instant starter up there. He's going to sit for at least a year. I hope we don't ruin him like we did Joyner. Well, that previous staff that did that, Preston, they're no longer here. They're no longer here. So, I feel like Gamecock fans would love a 30 for 30 on DeCarion Joyner. We need we need a 30 for 30 on his, on his career at Columbia. We do. Just a just, – just a just a full breakdown of that that whole thing. <clears throat> yeah. So. Anyways, guys, who's hotter? Who's hotter than Shane Beamer and company on the recruiting trail? Like I mentioned, guys, episode seven forty five of the podcast dropped this morning. The the Dear Santa episode. Really, really good stuff. Really, really fun stuff. And uh, yeah. Like I said, I'm looking forward to, to getting home with family and hanging out and sitting by the tree and watching some Christmas movies and eating too much food and just hanging out, man. It's all it's always a good time. It's always a good time. It's fun, you know, when you go home and you hang with family. And it's like all your you can you can kind of put your adult responsibilities on hold for a second, right? You know, mom and dad have got food in the pantry and it's it's you're just chilling. You're just chilling. You know what I mean? It's, it's nice. It's nice. I know some of you out there, many of you out there tuned in. Y'all have kids. Yo, you don't have any idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, y'all, uh, you know, y- y'all, y'all don't have that luxury anymore. I'm, I'm looking forward to just kicking my feet up and chilling. Just straight up chilling, man. Straight up chilling. So, it'll be nice. Preston says at least two of our quarterbacks are going to leave. I don't see four four star quarterbacks sitting. I mean, yeah, Preston. Realistically, somebody's going to hit the portal. Re- realistically, somebody will. I, I just you're not going to keep seven QBs on the roster. You're just you're just not. So I don't know who it's going to be. I, I don't really want to try to project who it's going to be, but 
you know, somebody probably will. So, somebody probably will. Uh, Chuck says some eggnog and a nice cigar. I'll probably skip out on the eggnog, but might 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 smoke a little birthday stogie. A little birthday stogie. Nothing wrong with a little birthday. I haven't smoked a stogie in quite a while, man. I I, I felt like it. I feel like after after the end of the football season, the amount of stogies we smoked in the month of November, I was like, I need to chill for a little bit. But uh, now nah, the stogies will be smoked this weekend. We'll have us a cigar, and then of course we'll have us a cigar next next week in in Jacksonville with the Carolina Cigars boys. So. Looking forward to that. Going to be a good time. Preston, my birthday is Christmas Day, my friend. My birthday is Sunday. So, my birthday is this weekend, for those that did not know. <laughs> oh, golly. Woo, buddy. Oh, my goodness. We just, we learn things about each other. We learn things about each other, folks. <sighs> Panic Ritter, for you, pause, my friend. Pause. He says, happy birthday, sexy Chris. Pause. Pause, my guy. Pause. Travi says, Santa, bring us a good run defense next season. <laughs> my guy, bro, my guy, Travi, they need to hire Travi as, as an analyst on the football staff because nobody loves talking run games, stopping the run more than Travi. Travi loves talking, stopping the run. I love that. I absolutely love that. I absolutely love that. You know, it's funny, and I'm sure many of you that are tuned in that, that know someone or if you're tuned in and you have a birthday on Christmas or around it, and maybe maybe this is this is just just me, but I, I've just learned to put my my birthday on the back burner. It's just like you know, Christmas is is uh is Christmas, right? And so like I, I just you know, birthdays are cool. You know, my my birthday's cool, but I don't even I, I don't know. I just you, you kind of learn you kind of learn to put your birthday on the back burner. You you really do, Kemp, my man. What's up, man? Appreciate you. Appreciate it. I see all the birthday wishes. Thank you all so much. Luke Davis, yes. Yes, my friend. Yes, towels will be at the tailgate. Yes, sir. Towels will be at the tailgate. Be sure to check us out. We will have the towels. We'll have koozies on hand for sale. Yes, absolutely. So, Lot J is where you can find us. We're one week away from the TSUS tailgate. Lot J outside of the stadium. Uh, with our friends at Carolina Cigars. Looking forward to it. Going to be a really, really good time. Um, yeah, looking forward to it. So, Rebecca says, how do you feel about sharing a birthday with Jesus Christ on his birthday? Well, I, I'm... <laughs> uh, it's it's cool. I mean, you know, it's, uh Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's it's my my birth my birthday sort of uh pales in comparison to the the birthday of the of the lord and the savior but uh you know it's it's a cool thing yeah travi yeah dude i love travi would love would love to talk some run game with you travi down in jacksonville hope to see you down there uh preston love the d-line recruits we got i think umio zulu kid will be great Rames goes to our high school in town. He's another sleeper that could be a star. Yeah, no, I, dude, the line of scrimmage, both offensively and defensively. Um, yeah, no doubt. No doubt. I'm, I'm, I'm very pumped, very pumped for the, the signing class. <laughs> uh, let's see. Panic Ritter, can we sing happy birthday? Panic Ritter, I'll, I'll, I'll leave that to you, my guy. Um, Luke Davis, will you be going to Christmas Eve service? I, I don't know. Kind of whatever the family wants to do. We normally do, though. We normally do. Chase Floyd, how do you feel about global warming? I, I have no takes on it, my guy. <laughs> I have no takes. I have no takes. TDC is slowly getting off the rails here. I mean, I say it's – I say TDC slowly getting off the rails. Meanwhile, I'm literally wearing Christmas Santa Claus heads on my on my, on my my head. Like, I, it's, it's been off the rails. TDC has been on. That's why we love it, though. TDC just stays off the rails. Just 
Santa Claus is coming to town. Santa, yeah. Uh, Panic Critter, yeah, I'll be in Jacksonville for the game, my guy. Yes, I'll be in Jacksonville for the game. Yep, we will be down in Jacks. Looking forward to it. Going to be a good time. Going to be a good time. You know, I mentioned this in the podcast, by the way, guys, and I'm sure somebody in here will know. But, you know, the 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 Christmas song, Chestnuts Roasting on an Open Fire. I realized I don't even know what a chestnut is. I certainly don't think I've had a chestnut before. I don't know what a chestnut is. I don't know. Let's jump back to the phone lines. Call from... Justin. Justin, what's up, my friend? How are you? Good, good. You doing okay, Chris? I'm doing fantastic, my guy. What's going on? I was say, Chris, are you getting away for Christmas, too? I am, my guy. Looking forward to it. Going home today. Uh, Going to go hang oh, out wow. with family. and Yeah, man. I'm excited. How about you? Yeah, me too, Chris. I ain't excited, too, Chris. I, I finished up my Chris shop, and, um, and I go I I go and see my fame this weekend, you know. Nice. Very good. I'm glad you got it done. Glad you got it out of the way. Yeah, what about you, Chris? You finished Chris Shopper too? For the most part, yes. I would say yes. Yeah. Well, hey, Chris, Chris Shopper's not easy, man. It's not, my guy. It is not. Yeah, the good news is, Chris, is at least we got a Christmas pass today. At least we got a quarterback. We got a quarterback, yes. We got our quarterback, Lenora Sellers. Yep, for sure. Yeah, I have about that, Chris, because we're no Spitz like we'll say on now. That's that's up the air, right, Chris? Yeah, no, it's up in the air. I don't think we'll know until, you know, uh, after the bowl game for sure. Uh, you know, when that'll happen, I don't know. But uh Yeah, yeah, I mean it's it's it'll be interesting to see. But you know, we're we're no, we're we're still waiting on that decision to come from Rattler. Yeah, hey Chris, you I always say, you know, because it'd be good if we stay to so help the the young callback get the West in the near future, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, dude, obviously, I'd, I'd love to see, uh, I'd love to see Rattler stay, no doubt. Would love to see Rattler stay. Oh yeah, hey Chris, um, far go, man. Um, we got whole, we got whole SC boy get be good there because we can't see another SC team get blocked. Yeah, you know, Chris. Yeah, say, say it again, Justin. What, run that by me one more time. Hey Chris. Hey, Chris, we got, we got to hope Missouri plays good in there because we can't see the SEC team get blocked, you know, like we saw Florida, you know? Yeah. I mean, Mizzou, I, you know, Mizzou, Wake Forest tonight, 6 That's actually a really good game. That's a sneaky good game. Uh, you know, I, oh, I yeah. gotta, I'll be honest. I don't care. I If Mizzou gets beat, I don't give a shit. They can kick rocks. I, I don't really give a damn. Sorry. I, I just – I like, dude, I, that <clears throat> that's a fun fact about me as we get into – is we really dive into bowl season. I'm not a conference pride guy. Like, I, I, I do not care. Like, I I want to see Georgia lose. I want to see pretty much every other SEC team lose except us. And, and you know, I want to see Tennessee win oh, yeah. because they're playing Clem sucks. But, I, you know, do I care if Mizzou beats Wake Forest? No. No. I'd actually probably prefer Wake Forest beat the shit out of them, to be honest with you. Oh, yeah. So, it, I, I don't it, want, it, I don't want Missouri my, having any more momentum. None. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Hey, Chris, I agree, man. I don't want to see Missouri get more mad because, listen, I tired of losing Missouri because that's my off now because, Chris, Missouri became my off for for a minute, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. I I, I don't want anything good to happen to Missouri football. <laughs> just sorry. I just no, I don't. don't. Hey, Chris, that's that with basketball, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, hey Chris, uh, far go, man. Um, for the man, I, they just got destroyed the bowl game a couple of weeks ago. You know, Chris, they kick a field goal in the yeah. fourth quarter. It's it's kind of funny. Yeah, they they got the shit kicked out of them. I mean, I, I know Florida had like thirty guys out, so I mean, whatever it is, what it is. But yeah, it was crazy. Oregon State's a good team. Oregon State's a really oh, good yeah. team. Yeah, hey Chris, if they might be in that Chris press conference, said, well, why did I kick a field goal? So we'll get shot out. Yeah, I mean, I, I yeah, a very much a must champ move, no doubt, to kick the field goal down like that. Hey, Chris, he might as well like some belt Billy, you know. Some belt Billy. <laughs> some belt Billy. Oh, some My belt goodness, Billy. huh? Yeah. Well, 
Merry Christmas. Uh, Merry Christmas to you, my friend. Hey, Merry Christmas, my friend, to you and yours. Appreciate you calling in as always, my guy. Yep. Hey, Chris, hope I'll see you in Jacksonville soon, man. Yes, sir. We'll be there. All right. Take care, brother. Go hey, again, Cox. Go, Cox. We'll talk soon. Appreciate you. Great stuff from Justin, as always. Yeah, the uh, the SEC Bowl season really gets going tonight. We got uh, Missouri and Wake Forest tonight at 6.30. How about that? Yeah. Travis Allen, I hope Santa brings you all Griswold. I hope Santa brings all you Griswold something nice, really nice. Clark, it's the gift that keeps on giving all year long. Mm-mm-mm. Do y'all have to deal with any Clemson relatives during Christmas? Is anybody out there like that? I, I I don't. I mean, I my sister's husband's a Clemson fan, but he he doesn't. He's not like a he's not a guy that's going to talk football. He doesn't. He he went there. He don't really. Thank God he don't really give a damn. Y'all have to deal with that. Is it is it is it is it, is it tough to deal with? Yeah. But John Edward, I know you probably give him hell, my guy. I know John John Edward gives him hell. Never forget that I called John Edward John for like two and a half years, and then he corrected me. Said, said I got to call him John Edward. Don't call him John. Call him John Edward. If you call him John, it's disrespect. John Edward, that's his name. Put some respect on his name. Here we go. Let's jump to the phone lines. Can you fix that shirt for in the world. All right. We had a spam call come in. Uh, Panic Ritter. Yeah, no show. Uh, no TDC Wednesday. We will be traveling. Right? And then no show, of course, Friday. No TDC Friday. We will be uh, game day. So, yeah, no, DC, no TDC Wednesday. Panic Ritter will be, we'll be traveling down to Jacksonville. Might do like a Twitter spaces, something like that, but no TDC. Uh, Monday, no podcast. Right? Because... We'll be coming off of Christmas, and there's really nothing to talk about. Um, and we'll have TDC, though, Monday. So your schedule next week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, TDC, podcast Wednesday. That's your schedule. That's your schedule. And, again, might do a Twitter Spaces on Wednesday. Guys, we're going to jump into one final break. On the other side, I want to continue to hear from you. More of your questions, your comments, your calls, and more. You're tuned in to the Daily Crow.
All right, guys, we're back. Final 10 minutes or so here on the Daily Crow. Taking your questions, comments, calls, 843-790-3377. Again, appreciate you all tuning in. Thank you all so much for the love, the support, another successful week in the books. we got 10 minutes left until we get into Christmas weekend. Very exciting stuff. Let's jump back to the phone lines here. Call from Living Oaks Academy. To accept, press 1. What's going on? How are you? Oaks Academy. God, it was loud. Living Oaks Academy. What is what is Living Oaks Academy? What is that? Man. A high school in Monk's Corner. Okay. Shout out to a, a private school in Monk's Corner. How about that? Wow. Shout out to to Living Oaks Academy in Monk's Corner, Berkeley County. Shout out to you guys. Wow. I'm sure Living Oaks Academy is is very proud of, of, of that, that the way that their, their school just got represented. <laughs> oh, God. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Here we go. Let's jump back to the Call here. from Little Brad Tell. To accept, press 1 to send a voicemail. Little Brad, what's up, man? How are you? How are you, Chris? I'm, I'm doing good. How about yourself? I'm doing fantastic, man. Appreciate you calling in. What's going on? Not much. Just counting down to the, to the, to the Gator Ball game against Notre Dame. And us playing the best football team ever. Looking forward to it. Yeah, man. I'm excited for the bowl game. Very excited. Are you going to be in Jacksonville or no? Uh, probably not. Mm. Probably not. Probably watching at home, just chilling I got with you. my fam. Very nice. And I want to say nice. happy, happy early 32 birthday. I mean, I appreciate it's it. Amazing, man. happy birthday. I just gonna get birthdays on Christmas. I just that's the luckiest per- person birthday you can have on that day. Just have it all to yourself. I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much for the love, man. It means a lot. No problem, no problem, no problem. Had I had saw a lot of stuff during transfer polls lately. Everybody's leaving South Carolina. We got a lot of players that committed. Very new. And I kind of – it's very interesting. Mm. So, we will see how it's going to turn out on the, 30, on the 30th. So, I'm looking forward to it as we get new players in and old players come and go, going to the NFL draft. And – yeah. Basically, that's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah, I mean, I, I know, I know, you know, I was going to say, I know we hate seeing guys opt out, but, you know, I'm looking forward to the bowl game. Great opportunity for these young guys. Great opportunity for the stars of tomorrow, if you will, to get their shot. And, uh, you know, you, yeah. hope, you hope, obviously, in the process that you're able to get a win. So, uh, you know, I was, I was just taking a look. South Carolina, you know, just to, just to give you some perspective on right. how rare, you know, you're going for your ninth win of the season, right? Right, you're going for your right. your ninth win. It would just be the eighth time in the 100 plus year history of South Carolina football that you've won nine games or more in a season. So it's yeah. there, there's a lot on the line. There's a lot on the line for sure. So much, so much. Yeah, very so much. Chris, I'm I'm gonna just hang up and uh, you have a best a good Merry Christmas and a happy birthday and a happy New Year. And you enjoy your rest of your vacation. Yeah, man. Hey, have a very Merry Christmas to you and yours, man. I appreciate you and Happy New Year as well. And I know we'll probably talk sometime next week also. Thank you, Chris. Have a good one. Yeah, man. Take care. You too. Awesome stuff. Lil Brad, appreciate you, my friend. Uh, again, guys, phone lines open. Go ahead and get your calls in. You got six minutes to go. Uh, let's see. Anyways. Eight four three seven nine zero three three seven seven. That's eight four three seven nine zero three three seven seven. Let's jump back to the phone lines here. Call from Stay off from East Tennessee. Cold as shit. To accept, <laughs> press one. To send a voicemail, press two. Uh, Dale, what's going on, man? How you doing? Freezing, man. How are you? Yeah, I heard you say it's cold as shit, man. It it is cold. Yeah. About as cold as my DM box these days, but that's mm. a good thing, you know. Yeah, that's, that's 
You, 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 but you're accounted for now. You're, you're good. Yes, sir. Roses are red and the violets are blue, they say. <laughs> Is that what they say? But anyway, I just wanted to call and wish you happy birthday, man. My little lady told me it was your birthday. Being born on the same day as our Lord and Savior. How does that make you? About 3,000, yeah. something? Yeah, I'm an old SOB right there, yeah. right there with, with Jesus himself. Yeah. That's, hey, ain't no other man you need to be you know, getting, you know, compared to. So that's a good thing. Yeah. I, I, you know, I just wanted to wish you happy birthday. I'm about to go pick up old Becky and take her to Shawnee tonight. She don't know. Hope she ain't still listening. But, uh. What's what's wrong? No, no, nothing. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm just uh, laughing at something. So, uh, oh, yeah. No. Well, I don't know. I heard you say a minute ago that you ain't never seen no chestnuts, but I, I, I ain't got no chestnuts to show you. It's so cold out here, man. Yeah. I mean, no, uh, yeah, I've never seen I've never seen chestnuts before. I don't believe I have. Right. Well, I don't really got too much. You know, I know I just want to say happy birthday, and we appreciate you, and we hope you have a Merry Christmas. Are you in, and I'll let in, you know. Are you and Rebecca spending Christmas together or no? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm dressing as an elf on the shelf tonight, and um, tomorrow she's going to be a giant candy cane, and uh, we're going to take family pictures, so I'll make sure I get these. What did you get her for Christmas? Can you spoil the surprise? Well, I'm not, I'm I'm having to build that chicken coop, you know. So I've been outside all day trying to put some heaters in there, but I ain't got a heater. Been having to use a bunch of microwaves to keep them warm, so I hope they don't turn into nuggets. Hey, either way, y'all be eating good if it does happen. Oh yeah, we like a tin pay, you know who, what I mean? Who, who Get a little honey mustard. Who doesn't love some good chicken tendies, man? Oh, chicken tendies to the main. To the, to the moon, Chris. To the moon. Yes, sir. Well, y'all have a Merry Christmas. Dale loves you. Oh, yeah. And uh, Hunter Kelly, I know you in Rebecca's DMs. And if you don't want Dale to raise hell, you best stay out of them. Big Dick Dale has left the building. <sighs> that was Dale from East Tennessee. That was Dale. Great stuff. Rebecca, sounds like you're taking care, taking good care of Dale. Love that. Love that. Stephen Borwell Jr., Merry Christmas, TDC. Happy early birthday. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Appreciate that. Merry Christmas to each and every single one of you. Thank you so much. I hope Santa Claus brings you everything you need and more, or everything you want. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all greatly. What a time. I will say on a serious note again, I'm grateful for each and every single one of you guys. Um, so happy. So happy for you, truly. So happy you guys are a part of this show. And uh, Babes and Waves, Merry Christmas. Happy birthday. Thank you so much. Appreciate that, Babes and Waves. Hope you're holding it down in the Myrtle. All across the state of South Carolina and all across the Southeast and we got Frank in New York, and whoever hears the sound of my voice, wherever you're at, again, I hope you have a very Merry Christmas. Stay warm, by the way. My goodness, it is freezing cold outside. I mean, it is, it is it's frigid. I'm even grateful for a little old panic Ritter, Ritter. Look at old Ritter. He said, you're even grateful for a little old panic Ritter. Oh, Ritter, we're grateful for you, my guy. We're grateful for old panic Ritter. I'm grateful for each and every single one of you, truly. Dude Rolf, a show says, Dale's mason jar runneth over. Indeed. Indeed. Guys, again, I just want to say thank you all so much. Sincerely. Uh, check out the podcast if you have not done so. Episode 745. And we will talk on Monday, of course. I was going to say no podcast, though, Monday. Podcast will drop Wednesday. Full breakdown. And I'll say this. If anything happens Monday, what we could do, we could do a Tuesday, Thursday release schedule for the podcast. Probably just stick with Wednesday, though. Probably just stick. That, that, would, that works better for my schedule. So, uh, of course, TDC Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. Podcast on Wednesday next week. So, uh, again, guys, thank you all so much for tuning in. Truly, sincerely, I appreciate it. 
have a very, very Merry Christmas. Enjoy your time with your loved ones, your family, your friends. I hope Santa Claus brings you everything you wish for. And don't forget the reason for the season also. Guys, again, thank you all so much. Appreciate you all tuning in. Have a Merry Christmas. We're out of here. And we will talk to you all on Monday.